This episode of The Brain Scoop is brought to you by a wondrously generous contribution from Heather Shu. The Chicago Field Museum is one of the largest and most respected natural history museums in the world. Join me as we go behind the scenes. Dun, dun, dun. Because of the nature of the collection, we have all of these old wild-caught mm -hmm. specimens, and you can put a zoo specimen of the same species in amongst the wild-caught, and it stands out like night and day. Yeah, yeah. In terms of shape and excess bone and all of these oh. weird missing teeth. Yeah, abscesses. Yeah, it's ick. Andrea is our go-to person for numbering bones. We would love to give you a demonstration of how fine she puts a six-digit number on a skull that's about that. Size. I would love to know because I have demolished a couple pygmy shrew skulls. So these are not numbered yet. But on what? something this small, I would do oh, the pelvis my and the limbs. Are you, what? And the scapula. What usually is the most important things to number are each side of the mandible and the skull. Researcher is most likely gonna look at the skull first. Mm -hmm. Wow. So. It was like watching magic happen. And if the pen's working fine, then it just takes that. But if, also if the bones are really greasy, using a larger pen where the ink will flow out a little bit quicker works better. And usually with a, something that's pretty greasy, I'll write the number out once and it'll be really diluted and you won't be able to read it very well, and then I'll write over it again. And what do you do if you screw up? I'll use a scalpel and scrape the ink off once it's dry, or I will use alcohol and like a Q-tip. Okay, and, and just wash it, it off and just let the bone dry. Um, and so for the skulls, our rule of thumb is to put the skull facing to the left mm -hmm. and imagine it as a, a grid with four quadrants and we put the number in the lower right. But you just put it in a little pill capsule. Yeah, so little pieces that are just gonna get lost like under the piece of paper end up going in a little pill capsule. Um, and then the, the pill cap will get numbered. I swallow things bigger than that. And this guy, his You're not legs even. are- You're not even gonna do that. The legs I are I don't even enough. believe you right now. And look at those nails. I know, it's, it's wonderful. It's like you okay, were anticipating this. Other systems of writing are different than ours, so sometimes the numbers are always on the other side, or they're always written at an oh, angle, weird. or like yeah. it's stuff you don't really think about until you actually see it. Yeah. So, no, I, I, I thought about that too. Like yeah. when I first started numbering, I'm like, what, where do you write the number on a femur? I'm sure if you came to our collection, you would be horrified because sometimes I'm just like, ah, 26, 8, 35, or whatever, and just wherever. Well, and especially when the bones are like, big, you could theoretically yeah. write it wherever you want, but like having a system of like always writing something in the same place. Consistency. Is it's nice. Key. Like it's not always going to look the same from one animal yeah. to the next, but. It's amazing. Yeah. You, you got some skills. Thank you. I'm very impressed. <laughs> that was really sweet. So many cabinets. What are these? What's in here? I'm so excited. What's in here? <gasps> Seals? Are these seals and sea lions? Seals have multiple cusps on each tooth, right? Yeah. So you see like three or four points on each of those teeth. Mm -hmm. This is a harbor seal and this, uh, these points, these cusps, uh, would allow this seal to grab a salmon and grip it and it wouldn't get away like a tight end has yeah. little points on his gloves so he can catch the, the football. And that's a characteristic that's found throughout all the phocids. They have uh, cusps on each tooth. Mm -hmm. But there's one particular phocid that has those cusps, but uh, evolution has left them with a morphology that makes them use those cusps in a completely different fashion than the harbor seal. Ready? Mm -hmm. It's happening. Oh, what? Is this a crab eater seal? That's awesome. The, uh, they have the weird Christmas tree teeth. And what do they do with them? They filter for krill. Emily, well, you're the best. That's amazing. You can see all the details on all. Ugh. Why? How did so, this happen? So they they <laughs> take a mouthful of water, close their teeth, and then squeeze the water out through their teeth and filter out all the krill, all the the small microscopic quote unquote crabs. They're actually invertebrates. And, yeah. But uh, and that can sustain them. And it's the most populous seal in the world. That's amazing. Found only in Antarctica. Yeah. So the same thing that sustains hundreds of thousands of these guys also sustains the 100 foot long blue whales. Wow. All in Antarctica. That, I, I can't even, I don't even know how this happens. Lobodon carcinophagus, lobed tooth crab lover. 
that's a pretty accurate name for these guys. I want teeth that look like that. Yeah, how so long it, How long would it take me to like adapt and, and grow a pair of those? So, I don't know, but if I come back next week and these teeth are gone, <laughs> and I see the next episode of Brain Scoop and you're wearing some necklace <laughs> with crab eater seal teeth on them. So how's brains on it?